Nobody wins when the family feels But my stash Head on the up, they tryna trash. Why up, Maggie? I'll say I'm high, you can come catch. Got fat bug with me if it's some rap. But like for the most part, like we were talking the whole car ride. So when he pulls into the parking spot he put the car in park he started rolling up a J. he never was going into the house he never was like leaving us in the car or nothing like that he was getting out to hit his J. he went to the back of the car like on the trunk leaned against the trunk and was about to hit his J. now mind you i'm still talking to her now when i'm facing the back seat of the car i can clearly see him out of the window and when he's Sits back to hit his J, it was like almost immediately like he just took off. Like I just seen a fast motion past the car and I just seen another fast motion past the car. And so in my head, I'm like, like, I'm like, what was that? She's like, what, what? And I'm like, like, I'm just trying to get my thoughts together. Like he getting chased down. Like this shit's really happening. Jump in the driver's Ma'am, I'm gonna be real here. Before we start this out, and the reason being, it's a lot of information pertaining to this case has been public. And the family TV, on top of that, had requested the interrogation and the body cam footage from Calvert County in Merlin after the man had recently accepted a plea and also given his video confession interrogation. But being young, in love, and being a child while having a child, it's like that equal uncertainty and growing pains. And more than often, it don't end well. Love is a strong word. And sometimes our life experiences help us learn and grow. Imagine feeling some type of love, but too young to properly express or even too young to manage it properly. More than often, as we mentioned, it lead to bad decisions with a mix of raw emotions and can lead to the situation like the day we're about to discuss. And let's set this straight, family. The reason we're here today is to talk about a story of a Merlin aspiring rapper who managed to be gunned down to a young man who was sleeping with his baby mother after walking in on the two sleeping at the young woman mother house in Southern Merlin. Now, this is where the details are important to stay on track and to make a definite answer on if the young mom is held responsible for allegedly setting her baby father up possibly once or even twice but it is also a possibility that that's not the truth so that's why we here family we're gonna get the facts in order for you guys to make a decision for yourself at the conclusion of this video two weeks ago the family of the deceased has spoke up via his instagram which we'll later discuss shine a light on the details of this case now with all the recent backlash that the young mom has been receiving because of these posts she had responded by making a youtube channel herself speaking her truth in almost an hour long video which we we'll later break down into about 30 minutes and go over it later in the video. Now in that video, whether it was done on purpose or by mistake, a possible motive was given by her own mouth with details of every answer that she gave. So today we talk about a young couple from Merlin who managed to have a baby and now the child father is no longer living after being gunned down by the man who was sleeping with his baby mother. So before we go over this one, remember, I don't give you no angle. I just give you the story. So with that being said, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. We're gonna jump right to it. Find me Tyree Richardson, aka a FSO Gun. Tyree was an inspiring rapper having a number of songs since five years ago, even having one with the local talents, a cute of food. At 19 years old, he purchased his own food truck and named it Dispat 301. It was popular in selling soul food. With having a huge support system from his family, he was able to make them dreams come true. Give me a month or two, man. This month will be up and running. Man, I want y'all to support. Man, black businesses need to support each other. Mm -hmm. Love more. Mm -hmm. In the community, we're going to be all over PG. My boy motivated you. You can do something a little different for the community. Mm -hmm. Mm. But we'll be serving everything, breakfast, lunch, dinner, everything, man. I just want, it's an experience for me, so, you know what I'm saying? Hey. We're going to hey. get it done. It's the spot, 2021. Hey, cool. Pull up, low, good yeah. drinks, alcohol for the little thotties. For the little thotties, some party. Hey. You hear me? <laughs> it's all motivational use purpose, though, mm -hmm. only. That's mm -hmm. all it is. Tyree was also an active hunter and spent his Saturdays rabbit hunting 
with his dad, grandfather, and cousin. Here's a photo of them all. Now, Tyree had a baby by a young woman named Autumn. They met while they was in high school, which you'll later hear from her. After having a baby, they end up getting a townhouse in Crofton, Maryland. But at this very house, Tyree had an attempt on his life only months before he was gunned down. And some say, because of the details, only a few people could have caved the drop. And those three people would be the best friend he was allegedly living with, his baby mother, of course, and a young woman who happens to know and hang with and called the person brother who actually took his life months later was also in the car with them after a birthday party returning back to Tyree and Autumn home. Here's a picture of Tyree and his son Cody. This picture was taken at Stony River in Annapolis, Maryland where he celebrated his 20th birthday at a dinner with his family. At dinner he told his family he was going out to celebrate that night. That night Tyree went to a club but he wasn't with his normal crew. When he arrived back home at around 3 a.m. 427 a lone gunman was waiting in a car which is shown above which wasn't noticed until after the incident. This was a stolen car out of DC and it was left at the scene even after Tyree was being chased in front of his home. The car was a stolen cleaning car. Tyree was with two passengers, his baby mother and the best friend of Terrence Yancey, AKA Trey, the man later convicted of Tyree's demise on 613. Here's where things get tricky. The young woman, the baby mother who you'll later hear from, said that they felt that it was her friend who gave the drop, the man who she met, the man who took out her baby father's life, which you'll later hear from. But there's also details surrounding that, like possibly having him come over over, knowing they address when they wasn't seeing eye to eye. And on top of that, the remarks that was made after the show called attempt on his life, having quotes like he lucky he wasn't sh in court transcripts from the baby mother. Above is the neighborhood, but in this post you're about to see is the actual footage from Croft and Merlin of him running and the lone gunman is running after him. Tyree managed to escape after an older lady who was a neighbor opened her door to save his life this day, with the police being called immediately. And there was details floating around that raised some eyebrows for the family of, the, of Tyree. One was that the two other passengers stayed in the car while Tyree got out, but it seemed his baby mother said because he was smoking and wanted to hit his J. Check it out. To the middle of January. My son, um, his birthday was January 6th. We had a party for my son at our house. Um, I was talking to Trey during the duration of that. I didn't stop talking to him up until I had got sick. I had got an infection in my throat and I was hospitalized for two days. Mind you, I was also supposed to go to Columbia to get a cosmetic procedure done and they had mandated the vaccine to go to Columbia and I wasn't willing to get it. Tyree was gonna pay for my surgery. Um, he was covering everything. Now, February, um, we celebrated Valentine's Day together. We went out to eat. March, um, I had rescheduled my surgery for March. So I ended up getting my surgery in Miami. Tyree still paid for my surgery. And at the time, we were doing good. Um, we and, and that's another thing that I really want to highlight throughout this story. Like, it was so toxic. And we just kept trying to sweep stuff under the rug to make it work. And that's one of my biggest regrets to this day. Because essentially, it cost him his life. And... You know, I look back at those times and I'm just thinking about like how, you know, it was just so selfish to the both of us. I knew my feelings were valid towards the circumstances of the situation, but it was just like I just felt stuck when I really wasn't. I felt like, oh, I have a lease. Oh, we're only driving my car now. I can't, you know, like just certain things like that. We're doing good. He did still pay for um, my procedure in March. But we had asked our landlord to shorten our lease. And we had asked our landlord to shorten our lease because at first we weren't doing good. So the shortening, the shortening of our lease had came up, I want to say probably January or February. But we ended up like once we were back on good terms, we had started looking for houses again. Like we were like, he had already agreed to shorten our lease. We have up until this date, which was May 7th. Um, so let's just look for somewhere else to, to live. And at the time we did definitely want something bigger. So April 26th was Tyree's birthday and for Tyree's birthday um, I had got somebody to come in do an at home massage for him. I had cooked brunch. I had went out. I had got him gifts. Um, we had went out to dinner with his family and then we went to the club. Mind you, his friend lives with us. His friend Boog lives with us. And Boog was not there that whole day. Like Tyree, I, I had went to Gucci and I came back, Tyree taking a nap on the couch after his massage. And so, 
you know, for me, it was just like, well, this your best friend. It's your right hand. Why he not here, you know, all day throughout your birthday? But we weren't looking at it like that at the time. We weren't looking at it like that at the time. I had cooked brunch. Um, we had a few hours later, we chilled for a little bit. And then we went out to dinner with his family. After dinner, we ended up going to the club. We went to Rose Bar. Now, Tyree told me, you know, like, if I bring my friends out, he definitely did tell his friends to come, but none of Tyree's friends ended up coming to his birthday. Like, nobody came to the dinner. Nobody came to the club that night. Nobody came to the house that day at all. Um, so I had invited my friend. Now, the friend that I invited to come out with us that night is who I met Trey through, which Tyree knew that. I've been friends with her years before she even introduced me to Trey in 2019. We were friends way before then. She came with us to the club. I had invited her. I had invited a couple, uh, two more of my friends. The other two couldn't come. She came. Um, Tyree's brother had came. And Tyree's brother's friends had came. So mind you, like, she drunk. She ends up throwing up outside the club. She literally, like, has the door open outside the block truck, like, with her head out like she she bent like she twisted. Wait, wait, wait. Come on, Monty. Come on, Monty. We about wait. to go to the car. Wait, wait. Make sure I throw up some more. Come on, hurry up. Get this shit out. Do, me and this girl, we had fell out a couple months before this. We didn't start hanging out with each other up until March, right before I went to Miami to get my surgery. So I'm pretty sure everybody watching this video, you've been drunk. And if it's you know when you drunk, you express it. Me and her were literally having like a heartfelt conversation the whole car ride. I'm literally like my back turned towards her. Like we drunk, we talking, all that. So when we finally pull up to our house, Tyree backs into the parking spot. When he backs into the parking spot, me and her, we're still having a conversation. Like we still talking. Mind you, we're drunk. We still talking. And I'm not going to say like we was, you know, like talking the whole time. Like, you know, where I'm you know, peeping what she doing, but like, we drunk, like, we would come back to the conversation, I would come back to the front and be like, yeah, cause you know, da 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 but like, for the most part, like, we were talking the whole car ride, so when he pulls into the parking spot, he put the car in park, he start rolling up a J, he never was going into the house, he never was like, leaving us in the car or nothing like that, he was getting out to hit his J, he went to the back of the car, like, on the trunk, leaned against the trunk, and was about to hit his J, now, mind you, I'm still talking to her. Now, when I'm facing the back seat of the car, I can clearly see him out of the window. And when he sits back to hit his J, it was like almost immediately like he just took off. Like I just seen a fast motion past the car, and I just seen another fast motion past the car. And so in my head, I'm like, like I'm like, what was that? She's like, what, what? And I'm like, like I'm just trying to get my thoughts together. Like he getting chased down. Like this shit is really happening. I jump in the driver's seat. I put the car in drive and I start driving in the direction of where Tyree ran. Now, mind you, it was not as quick as like he started running. The dude, I seen another fast motion start running after him, and it was kind of like a like a click kind of situation. If you ever been in a situation where you know it's happening fast, stuff kind of slow down. So I'm like, I gotta get myself together. I literally jump in the driver's seat put the car in drive, and I start driving in the direction of where he ran to. Now, when I'm driving, I got the windows down. I wrote the windows down. I'm literally calling his name out from the wind, like from the car. Like, Tyree, Tyree, like yelling his name out. And I'm like, we like, come to the car, come to the car. And so I don't hear no commotion. I don't hear like no rustling. I don't hear him. So I start circling the neighborhood. Our neighborhood had one entrance on one side, another entrance on another side. So I'm literally going out of one entrance into the other one, like circling, yelling his name out. So the last time that I circled, it's a police car parked in the library that was adjacent to our neighborhood. The library was one entrance. You go down a little bit. Our neighborhood was the next entrance over. So I see a police car parked in the parking 
parking lot of the library. Mind you, we live in Crofton. It's a predominantly white uh, area. It's not too much going on. For the most part, it's quiet. It's peaceful. You know, like some days we leaving our doors unlocked, like getting comfortable. Like it's it's one of those type of neighborhoods. I start hitting my horn and like getting my lights and like flagging the, the officer down. He put his lights on and start following me into the neighborhood. So when he follows me into the neighborhood, of course he calls for backup. I get out of the car like frantic, like panicking. Like I'm like, my boyfriend, I don't know what's going on. He just got chased. I just seen somebody chase him. He just got out of the car and somebody started chasing him. So he's asking all these questions like which direction did they go in? How many people did you see chasing him? It was only one person that uh, was chasing him. How many people did you see chasing him? All that. So I'm as I'm going, um, answering his question. He's questioning me as we're walking to my house, cause I'm showing him where we was like where it all started from. And so at the time, of course, like I'm not aware that the car that the dude had jumped out of was there. But once I got back in front of my house, I live there every day. I'm familiar with who parks here, who don't park here, what cars are out here. This car, like we was parked right here, and this, you know, like I'm looking at the car, like. You know, we got DC plates. They ended up running the plates of the car and it was stolen. They literally had dogs out there. They had like some, some type of like equipment where they could track if an Uber or a Lyft was calling a certain proximity. Like, so they doing all that. It's dogs, police officers coming out. So at the time, I did not know that Tyree had got the attention of one of our neighbors and she had let him in the house. Now, when Tyree, I guess, seen the commotion of like all the police officers arriving or heard it, I don't know. I don't know. Still to this day, I don't know where the lady's house was. But he had came out. He's frantic. Like, you know, like he literally just got chased down. Mind you, it's his birthday. Now, Tyree immediately told his family he felt played and set up. But the family didn't go into details on exactly who one of the two passengers set him up. home with us. I really didn't know who to think about because Tyree was not like into it with nobody like he didn't really have like too many problems or anything like that to that extent where somebody would hop out or even knew where we lived or like our movement and stuff like that to hop out and chase him down so we get into the house the police are there they're taking statements mind you like we got stuff in our house it's just an uncomfortable situation we were already starting to pack to move out our lease is ending in two weeks coming up so we, we started to pack and stuff like that, but at this time at this point in time we just getting clothes, he getting his stuff, and he called his parents. We go to his parents' house after this night. Mind you, he was carrying my friend, like he like get her out of my house, like all this type of stuff. So the next day, um my friend had reached out to me. From there, like I had sent Tyree the messages and he was pretty much like he still didn't trust it or whatever like that granted because she was the only one with us that night the night that of his birthday it was a fake page named trey and his views but this is where things like kind of took a turn with this story the following week was my birthday my birthday is may 4th me and tyree had took a trip to puerto rico when we went to puerto rico tyree had received a dm i had hit my friends up and i said we know who said tyree up so when i'm sending in this we start sending voice messages back and forth. And in the voice messages, the friend who lived with us started to come up because we found out, we as in me and Tyree found out that the dude who DM'd him this, his best friend or his close friend, his right hand, I don't really know, was dropping bug off at that library. So when we found that out, and for the friend to not have been there the whole day of his birthday, very coincidental, that, you know, now this dude reaching out to Tyree, speaking on the night of his birthday, that his friend was not there for. Mind you, he's lived with us ever since we moved in. So I just find it very ironic how none of this, none of the other details surrounding this story, surrounding this night were was brought up. And I just, I think it's very coincidental that they are bringing this up two years later they come on his page to do this series about how I attempted to set him up not once but twice. You know, it's all coming after words were exchanged and they didn't like my response. 
And so that's why I felt the need to, you know, come on here and really be very thorough about what happened to the full extent. Whether it make me look good or bad, like Tyree definitely was looking at my friend. Yes, he was looking at her because she was the only person with us that night. And then you gotta ask yourself, for what reason would I want him set up? Like that it, it just it's not really adding up. And if y'all thought that I was behind something that day, why would y'all have allowed me to move into y'all house afterwards? And he he made it known to his family that he was looking at my friend. Yes, he made it known to me that he was looking at my friend. And then going through his views, because we definitely went through the views, you know, like we try and piece stuff together. We just came home. It's his birthday. We just came home from the club. And he get hopped out on, like, in front of our house. And they bringing up me. They trying to paint me in this limelight when they all sat through that trial. That trial was eight days long. Months later, June 13th, 2022, Tyree would be gunned down after walking into his baby mother home in Dunkirk, Merlin, on Overlook Court. Turns Kenneth Yancey, 22 years old at the time from Washington, D.C., a.k.a. Trey. He was wanted in connection for that homicide that happened in Dunkirk, Merlin. The investigation went in the area of Lions Creek Road in Dunkirk. At 6 a.m., police activity in the area, River Shore Drive and Overlook Court and surrounded areas in Dunkirk advised all residents to to stay inside. They also released a photo of Trey and said he was wanted with him being captured on security footage leaving the scene. Now Trey ended up getting captured and on July 28th, 2023, turns Kenneth Yancey, now 23 years old, he received 18 years of active incarceration for his role in the shooting death of Tyree Richardson. It was a week long trial. He was convicted of two firearms violations, four counts of reckless endangerment, and one count of destruction evidence but he wasn't charged with m1 and we here to figure out why evidence revealed that tyree entered her home early morning hours of june 13 2022 in an attempt to reconcile with his ex-girlfriend when he entered her bedroom he was met with the hell of gunfire from trey according to the indictment trey fired 16 shots and then fled the residence as we mentioned a massive manhunt had ensued with trey being captured 24 hours later in a wooded area in dunkirk but here's the thing during this week-long trial tyree baby mother took the stand and it was a lot of information that she gave as well but a lot of it wasn't adding up. A is the answer, Q is the question. Okay, do you recall when the conversation occurred while you living in Crofton? Answer, the end of December? Question, the end of December. Okay, now, did you ever meet the defendant, Trey, in person while you were living in Crofton? Yes. That's red flag number one, fam. She allowed this man to know where they was living at in Crofton and apparently even her mother house where he lost his life at in a prestige area that's not Metro Access in Southern Merlin. She then was asked, okay, how many times did you meet the defendant while you were living in Crofton? Answer, once before in January of 2022. I got sick and was in a hospital. I had never seen him before that once. Question, okay, when you saw him before that, was it ever romantic? Answer, yes. Question, it was? Did Tyree know that you had met the defendant while you were living in Crofton at that time? Answer, not at that time, no. Question, now, you indicated, okay, when did you leave the residence, the townhouse in Crofton? May 7th? Answer, May 7th. Question, okay, why did you leave that particular location? But this is how we know was some inside games playing. Some of us was born at night, but not last night. Now here's what details from her being cross-examined on the stand. Draw some eyebrows for the family, rightfully so. And before I read the transcript, I want to explain why. He was already set up at his home. They wasn't even allowed to ask that because he wasn't charged for that him being set up. When questioning the baby mother, it was an objection and she couldn't elaborate. But after already being set up, he knowing where you live, you're later find out that he just so happens to know, coincidentally, when you break up with your baby father to call from a block number that don't make sense somebody else gave that drop as well or at least that information question so miss anderson we were just talking about you tyree and cody moving into the residence in crofton how long did you stay in that home well what kind of property was it a house an apartment as we just mentioned the answer was a answer a townhouse question a townhouse okay how long did you stay in that townhouse answer until may of 2022 question okay how did you have any contact with the defendant once you initially at that point in time answer it was a casual conversation like a checkup but it was unexpected question how long had it had been since you spoke with the defendant before you had blocked his number answer years okay do you recall when this conversation occurred while you were living in crofton the end of december but check this out she wasn't crossed exam on this question that she later gave in her youtube far as why the dude called after finding out two years later the family that is he just so happens to know they broke up check it out Hold on. i am Therese's son's mother I am who the FSO Gunk story on Instagram is about. Uh, I'm finally coming on here to say something after almost two weeks of all of this starting because 
I know why it's starting. I know the objective. And I wanted to get in front of it before the rumors and the lies and the manipulative, you know, theories and things like that that are being put out about me get too far. I feel like they already kind of have gotten too far. And I was going to stay quiet because this is something that's happened almost two years ago. And for me to, you know, like relive something that happened from two years ago that to this day I'm still healing from, I'm still trying to move forward from. It was very hard for me to choose what I should do. So I met how I met both Tyree and Trey. When I first met Tyree, I met him in 2017. I met him in my freshman year of high school. We didn't start dating until the end of my 10th grade year in high school. I had moved out, I moved with my grandparents, and I had ended up transferring schools. When I transferred schools, me and him, we were closer in proximity as far as like uh, the area that I was living in. And so it was just, we just started hanging out, started getting closer, and we ended up dating. We ended up breaking up in the summer of 2019 in June. Now, in the summer of 2019 when we broke up is when I met Trey. Trey is who killed him the night of June 13th. When I met Trey, I met Trey through a mutual friend of mine who I've been friends with for years prior to. I met him um, the day I was going to my mom's house. My mom was having a cookout. And I went to my friend's house to go pick her up for the cookout and he was there. They have, they like knew each other through like some family stuff and like just like called each other brother and sister or whatever the case may be. Now that was then, that was in 2019. Trey had ended up coming with me and my friend to my mother's house for the cookout. This is in June of 2019. Mind you, me and Tyree break up, we, it's fresh, it just happened. Um, so I didn't really know Trey, I knew of him. Uh, he had been around and like, you know, a couple of occasions, but we never formally met up until this day. Um, since then, we just started to get to know each other from that cookout. Now, even though um, Trey and I, we never dated. He, we were never boyfriend or girlfriend, but we did get very, very close. And we got almost to that point with each other. Now, in the whole summer, Tyree was doing his thing. I was doing my thing. We didn't rekindle up until Labor Day. Is it Labor Day weekend? I think it's Labor Day. I think it's Labor Day in September. Uh, school had just started, I believe, and he had hit me up. It was just like, you know, let's try it out again. Let's try to, you know, make shit right between us. And we did just that, but it was not exclusive. I was not exclusive to him. And he knew that. He knew um, who I was dealing with, I believe through like Instagram at the time. I'm not too, too sure about when he found out who I was dealing with or how he found out who I was dealing with, but he did not know him. They did not know each other. Um, after him reaching out to me to rekindle, I was dealing with the both of them. Now this is the part where I wanna like interject because I know I was dealing with the both of them. They both knew that I was dealing with the both of them. Uh, Ray and Tyree, they never crossed paths. They did both speak on the phone on both ends. One day I was over Tyree's house. Trey had called me. Tyree had answered. They exchanged words. And one time I was over Trey's house, Tyree had called him. Well, called me, and Trey had answered, and they exchanged words. So I do want to add that part in because that's important as well in this story. Um, only just because I just want to emphasize the fact that they never crossed paths, they never met, but they definitely did have words exchanged during that time period. If you're young and you're dealing with more than one person, then you know how that is. And social media is everybody's just acting like that, that they've never been in that situation, but you know, teach is on. Um, now, me and Trey ended up getting closer towards the end of the year of 2019. So, I want to say like November, December, January, we were starting to get closer. And I was starting to lean more on the side of, you know, taking him serious on a relationship aspect of things. I had ended up going through his phone January of 2020, saying something I didn't like. 
And so I started talking back to Tyree again. Now, me and Trey had ended things. We ended things. I left his house. It was a whole, like, you know, argument between him and I. Left his house, and I ended, I started talking back to Tyree again. I would say March, we ended up getting back together officially. And only because COVID had hit. And when COVID hit, we weren't going to school physically anymore. Now, like I said in the beginning of the video, I live with my grandparents. I used to take clients out of my basement in my grandparents' house. When COVID hit, they're older. Um, the idea of me taking clients in a house, it was, it was just a no. So I started taking clients in Tyree's house and I started taking clients at my friend's house. I ended up staying at Tyree's house from that because I, you know, I would take clients every day. I just wouldn't end up going back home. At the time, I'm 17. At the end of March, beginning of April, I had got pregnant with my son. When I got pregnant with my son, that kind of sealed the deal as far as like my living arrangements. I just ended up like moving into his house, like slowly but surely going back home, getting more clothes, bringing my stuff over there, things like that. Um, after we decided to, you know, go through with my pregnancy, we were really trying to make things work for, you know, what we were about to be, which was a family at that time. Things got rocky between Tyree and I at the very end of my pregnancy. My cousin had called me. It was three weeks before our baby shower. And it's some girl on Instagram and she posting about Tyree, posting about Tyree trying to fly her out, posting that they've been talking since the beginning of the year, which the beginning of the year is when I got pregnant. And so, finding that out, I was like so stuck because I'm like, damn, you know, I'm 18 at the time. I had turned 18 in May and I'm pregnant. I'm eight months pregnant. So, it's, it's no going back on the decision, you know, to keep a baby, to keep the baby. Everything is already prepared for my son when he gets here. So, it was just like, I just felt very stuck. I felt dumb. I felt like you know, like betrayed, like, you know, like he played me. Like if you've been pregnant or you have kids and, or you're pregnant, you just know how sensitive you are, you know, emotionally and mentally and things like that. So it fucked me up. But, um, my, my baby shower in three weeks and it's like, you know, what can I do? Now, the only reason that I kept all this to myself and I'm, I'm being so transparent y'all. When I say like, I'm going to take accountability on my end and, you know, say my piece, like, this is, this, these were my real, raw emotions. I felt stupid, and I didn't want anybody to know that, you know, you, it was kind of like a, you know, told you so type of moment, and I didn't want anybody to have, like, that upper hand, or to be able to look at me and, like, with a judgmental eye, like, nothing like that, so I just, I kept it to myself, I kept everything to myself. The second major, like, event during my pregnancy that really, like, caused regret was my maternity shoot. My outfit didn't come on time. So I had to improvise the outfit. I had to change my whole concept idea. So many things that went wrong. And so we finally get there. And Tyree, he says he got to play. He got to play. So I'm like, okay, like, I'm thinking it's about to be something quick or to do it outside. If you know, you know what that is. But he never came back. He never came back to the maternity shoot. Like I literally had to call him when it was over with and shoot everything by myself. He didn't get in one picture with me. And so at that time, I just felt like, you know, like, is this something that he want? Or like, you know, I'm kind of like realizing like this is something that I may have to go through by myself. I was very confused. I was very stuck. I was just kind of like mentally preparing myself. Like, okay, this might not go as planned. So it wasn't until my son was born, my son's birthday, um, January 6th, I had him on a Wednesday. I woke up, Tyree told me um, he was going downstairs to go get me breakfast, and um, he never came back. He never came back. He left me in the hospital that whole day up until like 9, 9.30 something at night. He didn't come back for that whole day. He left me in the hospital. I'm on a baby monitor and he at home on the phone with another girl. I had crashed. I had gotten into a car accident when I was pregnant. So my car, we were only using his car. Uh, we were still living with his parents at the time. If this is that, then it's just that. And I can't go back on the decision now. My son is here. So we ended up um, leaving the hospital. And I will say that after 
after I had my son, I like my whole emotions towards him changed because of how good he was with my son, with our son. That just like completely like changed like my whole trajectory like of trying to get things and just get myself together to kind of like move on, move out. And again, like if you know me personally, you know I do have a lot of pride. So it was like I refused to go back home and like he was just like on daddy duty, like hands on. It wasn't like no dad or mom rose. Like he woke up at night, he was working. He really, you know, tried to put his best foot forward to make up for, you know, everything that I was feeling, that he knew I was feeling, and um, make it up by just being there, being there for me, being there for Cody as well. I feel like Cody definitely brought us together and we, we were about like we valued the family unit that we had established more than whatever else we was dealing with before then. May he put a down payment on my car. I had got a car. Um, so it was just like a lot, like we was really moving in a positive direction. He had got a PPP loan, got the food truck. He ended up selling the food truck and he reinvested all that money back into the bag. That's all that money, like things were definitely just like very stable. Things really didn't get bad. Now a post that she made also had been floating around. It was a response to a post on her post. Set up girls get smoked too, laughing emoji. She responded, why wait so long with crying emoji? A suspect, believe it or not. But it's the same young woman who has Tyree as a spot on her Instagram post as her angel. Now in her YouTube post, she ended up explaining why they broke up and sharing a clip of a recording of him pleading to be back in a relationship after physically hurting her the week before, which is a huge no-no. Check it out. Now, now so December was like, for me, I was really like standing on, we just need to separate, we just need to go our own way. I guess he was upset about me terminating the pregnancy, but at the time it was just like, you know, how can you, how can you be mad that I wanna terminate a pregnancy? So it just like reopened a can of worms for me, like just the trust and everything else, everything was jeopardized. I had started talking to Trey now trey had called me it was very um ironic that he called me like right after everything had happened between me and tyree he had called me off a block number when i answered it was him and we started speaking again mind you i had just terminated the pregnancy and i had just called tyree on the phone with the girl so when he called i entertained it i entertained it i had seen him um, we had went out, I seen him, and I started seeing him all the way up until January. And I started talking to Trey again. Tyree had found out that I was talking to him. One day I had went out and um, I believe like my iPad or something like that, he had seen the messages on my iPad and found out that I was talking to him again. We got into a big fight. He ended up, he ended up punching me in my face um choking me like just the whole nine like it was it was bad like it just think you should have told me to work a shot for my child for you for all the shit i dragged you through for the last four years you know i honestly feel as if our next six months is gonna be so great of our relationship that you will be able to you will be able to just forget about everything that's happened in the past. I just really think you would see a greater change. I don't like when you tell me it's no more because I really got faith in this shit. I really do care. You, okay, I really so listen, do listen, listen, listen. think that this can work. Don't keep cutting me off. I really do think that this can work. I know we can work it out. I want to do this shit with you without my home, without you being on my home, without you being here. It's, uh, it's empty. Yesterday, I was fucking in my room all day. I can't keep doing this shit. I can't keep living like this. I don't want to be with nobody else. I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. You know, I honestly don't know what to say. I can just tell you I'm sorry because I literally thought a lot of shit. That's way this relationship down. I've done a lot of shit that can make you hate me. I've done a lot of shit that will make you look the other way when I could be saying something right. But I just want you to open your mind up and just to see everything we losing. The house. So me being with my child and everything. 
a bunch of shit. Like, so, I don't want to lose my love with you. I don't want to have it restored. All that shit. And then we come back to each other and we work it out. And then we have to do all that again. I don't want to have to do that. I don't want to start the baby stuff again. I'm just asking you to try, babe. And any sign of me cheating, any sign of me doing anything wrong, you can leave. You can, you that, can that, go right that, out the that, door. That's what, that's what you don't understand is I don't want to work it out. In order to you, work it out, no, way, so no, way. Just wait, just let me finish. Let me finish. I know you don't want to. I'm already, Listen, under, I'm I already push. understand you don't want to work it out. I know why because. It takes me this long to try to fucking okay, so listen, put it together. I'm not done but talking. that's you not the way I want to go. You just cut me off. You just cut me off. So can I talk? Yes. In order to work something out, both people have to want it. Yes. And I don't. And I'm just asking. So I'm telling you how this is going to go. I just don't think we should be like this, babe. You're trying to, you're trying to run a show, and I just think you should just give me an opportunity to fix it for our relationship. Like, I'm so down on this shit. I'm so mentally broken. I really want to fix my own, bro. You're so mentally broken. Babe, I've been through a lot of shit. You've been through a lot, too. I'm not knocking that, bro. I'm not knocking that. At the end of the day, you went through shit when it was most trauma, and you were having a baby. a terrible boyfriend. I was never there. I was absent. I wanted to smoke J's more than worrying about my family and making sure y'all straight. Just worry about getting high or simulation around my ass and shit like that. I'm not worried about that shit no more. Like, I honestly have a clear head. I honestly think about putting my family ahead. I honestly thinking about still being able to stand so if emergencies come up you crash your car shit happen and I'll be able to put it back on my feet like that that's mad shit I don't want to lose you bro like I'm not even going to think about losing you because that shit is hard for me to endure bro that we were waiting for Christmas and I keep telling you I never had a Christmas with you bro just want to just try to spend time with you at least try to enjoy my life with you while I can I only had one life we already had kids we already started a family let's get this shit right while we can before it's too late it's not too late baby because we're, we're right here talking it's not too late we're right here talking it's not too late we still did it again it's not too late it's not too late why because I'm a kid Okay, and I'm asking you to just love I me again. I feel bad for Blue that he has to. Get I'm just asking love. you to love me again, so, babe. I'm just so asking far. you to love me again, babe. I'm it's asking convenient. you to. Please, I'm just asking you to love me again. I'm just My asking son's you to, stuff is here. I'm just asking and you. And so I'm able to. You're not moving. I don't want you to leave. I don't want you to do all that. I'm not trying to tell you what to do. I want you to just see positivity out of this situation. It's no positivity. It is it's positivity. No You're making it negative. If I'm telling you, it's still it's positive. I just I'm telling your head open. Babe, and I, I'm eye. fine. I'm still saying positivity. Okay, I'm still seeing positivity. You're the one who's painting a negative on the situation. Like, you not understand. You're laughing at me, bro. It's negative. It's not. I can't because take I'm right negative here. On I'm it's trying to work negative. this shit out. I'm right here trying to work this shit out. I'm right here trying to. You're trying to work this out. In a week yes. ago, you punched me in my face. And I've done you that. And I've told you. That. I've done that. I've done that. Me and choked you. Babe, but you gotta understand I'm out of town. You come back home. It's just fucking. What bitches' numbers in your phone? You're, you're on the right, phone with I bitches while I'm in the you're kitchen. Right. You're in the living room. I was not on the phone with no bitch while you was in the kitchen and I was in the living room. You didn't know. I swear to God. I swear to God I wasn't on the phone with no bitch in the living room while you was in the kitchen. I would never do no shit like that. You I wouldn't was. even I wouldn't even call no bitch in my house with you right here. That's that's so disrespectful. You might have thought I was on the phone with a bitch. You were. I wasn't. Okay. Well, besides, I wasn't on the phone with a bitch. I'm telling you, I wasn't on the phone with a bitch in the living room 
with you right here. I wouldn't even do okay, that shit. Okay, so like Amy, that. I just misheard. But Maybe you misheard. Like I said, I I wouldn't do no shit like that. Like that's beyond disrespectful. I wouldn't even. I would be super mad you did some shit like that to me. I wouldn't do no shit like that. That's not even. That's drawing a lot. Disrespect is. Yeah, you're right. I've done yeah, a lot of disrespect and shit. Both of us, and I feel like, right, why would you want to be with somebody like that? Because I understand that I play a role in my all this shit is this way, baby. I love you. You're beautiful to me. I love you from the bottom of my heart. When you get your body done, you're gonna be a one day one. I'm gonna still continue to love you. I've still loved you the whole time we were together. I've told well, myself that, that I can. Love? I told myself that. How do you think that's love, Tony? I think it's love because I can always still pull you close to me regardless of because how Because I've always it. just been accessible to you. No. And now I'm just going to cut off the accessibility. I'm, I'm telling you and that. And I think that you should just be grown enough to say, let's just make these last months count. I just don't think we should just do that, babe. I don't, I don't think, think we should do that. Crazy. I don't think we should do that. I'm not trying to be crazy, but you're not even letting it be another way. You're not even because trying to think about the positives of the situation. We've been together for four to years. You dragged way. yourself through it for four years. What's going to hurt you? Another two months? Another two months of doing this shit? Then you still got to do it for another 18 years. That way, you're not even like... I'm going to be a mom longer than 18 years. I'm going to be a mom, a dad longer than 18 years too. You think I'm not going to be there for my child? You think I'm not going to be humble with my child when I'm 30? Shit like that. Like, I want to do shit with him, bro. I want to yeah, fucking you can still enjoy can. You the one who said, if I break up with you, Cody won't have a dad. And that's fine. You don't want to be you don't want to be there for Cody since we broke up? That's fine with me. Get off me. You sing. Get off of me. You sing. I know. Okay, so please move. You sing. Okay, you stink. Move. I don't want to. No, it's not up to you anymore. No, it's not up to me. No, no, it's not up to me. I'm just asking you to try, baby. Stop listening, babe. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me, bro. I'm not trying to be aggressive or nothing like that, bro. Listen to me. Listen to me, bro. Look at what you giving up, bro. What am I giving up? It's nothing here for you. Everything you giving up, everything is nothing here for you. You keep saying that I'm here. Cody's home is here. Your sweet is here. Hey, I'm admitting to me not being the best to you. I've admitted to that. Like, I've never admitted to that before. I've never said, damn, I've been fucked up. I've been doing all this shit. I've been this, that, and the third. I've never admitted to that shit ever. I never recognized where I was wrong in certain situations. I'm now seeing that and it just makes me so mad because now it took me this long to take the initiative to make this shit work babe i don't want to lose my relationship you got power in you to hold on to me to hold on to what your son has to hold on to everything please get off your phone problem is dude you i don't see what the problem is i don't see what the problem is i'm not taking anything from body. you i don't care about that shit. i want to do it because of the shit i put you through but i want you to understand we have a child. We have to raise for 18 yeah, years. Listen, 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 listen. Co-parenting sucks. I don't give a fuck who tells you that. He's missing. Not when. He's missing two perspectives every single day. He's missing two perspectives every. I'm just giving you real shit. He's missing two perspectives every single day. And in order for him to be a man. He's, are you a man? And you have both parents. Are you a man? Do you yes, think you're a man? I think I'm a man. I think I you show. You think you're a man? Yes. And um, I, I feel as if I definitely don't show characteristics of a man all the time and I do fucked up shit that I do that present me to be a pussy but I am a man I stand on all 10 I never folded on my family I always been there anything financially wise I never folded I've been there bro you can't say I, I ain't my child like I stand on my 10 I stand on my 10 bro I give you shit that I don't even want to do I still do it because like that's man shit like paying for your last class I wanted to spend all my money in LA I said fuck it I'm gonna look out for her I'm gonna help her Boom. Next time, I want to spend all my money in L.A. Fuck it. I'm going to pay for the surgery. I'm going to help her out. I'm going to help her deal with her bills. Help her do with her own shit. So I want than, you to genuinely be happy. Other, than, other like, than materialistic things, what do you what do you, what do you do you offer in this relationship? 
other than materialistic things support. so that support yes so cheating on me my whole pregnancy that's support babe you can't bring up shit from three years ago okay just... so punching me in my face seven days ago that's, that's support. wrong that's wrong that's fucking wrong you're right that's the type of conversation i want to have though like so i can improve so i can fix myself so yeah, i can just Bill, like you think that this Did, doesn't help do me, but this really this, does this, help me. Like, this relationship literally drives you crazy. I don't think it drives me crazy. I love the relationship so much it drives me crazy when I lose it. But you That's a but, problem. But I feel like you the one that that lost it. I did. I admit, so, I lost it. I played a role in us losing a relationship. Not be charged with M1 is crazy. So I can't wait to show you guys the video confession interrogation. But until then, this allowed the process. But within the last 24 hours of me uploading this video, the family of Tyree had went to Instagram and released their own audio response into Autumn's. Check it out. I told my family to dead it. Cody is family, which makes y'all family. We have to be family. And at the end of the day, if we... Just think about what Tyree wants. That's all that matters. It's not about me. But see, Roger, and, and you got to also know what you're dealing with in front of you. You know, that was like, they, they all just, they, they, they could fight, fist fight literally, and then be mad at each other for a week. But they brothers, that's what brothers do. But, but, yeah, but, but at the, but at the end of the day, we, Cody can't, we know Cody loves Tyree, he loves us, he loves y'all, he loves everybody else, but he's blessed enough to have a family, but I just wanted to give the backstory because, and I've been telling, like, have Autumn call me, like, I want to talk to her, she needs to understand. Autumn is a fucking mess. I bet she is. Because at the end of the day, we all human and they young. And I can go back to when I was in my relationship 20 years ago. I'm 45. We've been married for 23 years. We weren't perfect either. So nobody's perfect. But sometimes you have to find that it's just unfortunate that it ended the way that it did. And I know from my son fact, I, yeah, I know from my son fact, he would have, if, if he, if he knew what he was walking into, he would not have walked into that situation the way that he did. And that could have been a bad situation for the other person. He might have been, right, right. And so unfortunately that person, they have to now deal with that for the rest of their life. But I did want her to understand that what I was initially told reflected my reaction. But as I've been, and I've been working closely with the detectives, like they have been saying, you know, they have been confirming and they have been, you know, well, this is what happened. And at the end of the day, it can't bring Tyree back. So I can't really, I can't really um, fester on it. But what I can do is I can't allow our family to be broken over what should have happened. Like everybody makes their own decisions. And I don't, and I think as I told you in the message when you said to Roger, this is Tyree's mom, I don't do social media. Just call me because I know that things can be. Right. But I know that's the lifestyle that he chose. This life, I didn't, I didn't expect that. Just being in love, like, right. He died to, he died to, he died, he died to his heart. But at the end of the day, he wouldn't have had it no other way because that is who he wanted. He wanted, he didn't care under no circumstances. So I can accept some of that. And like I said, all has to do, all that would do and have to heal in her own process. But I wanted her to go forward understanding like what our family's position was. Yeah, like, um, I'm not, her. I'm not mad at her. I'm not judging her. If that's what she chose to do, like that's on her. Like I can't fight Tyree battles because I know Tyree wouldn't have felt that way. He didn't feel that way. This the boy Trey has, from my understanding, has been around. They've been back and forth. So he still they still would go back. That's what young people do. Um so yeah.
This is so crazy, man. And so, I, I, I want you to let your family know, like, we had no idea about Anna and the things she was doing. Like, we had no idea. We had no control. And even my brother, we was on FaceTime with, we were on FaceTime with my brother last night. And he was going in. He was saying all this shit to all them. And I had to text him. I said, I had to text him. I said, you need to just calm down a little bit. You're just being a little too hard. But, but I said, you're saying some real ass shit though, and she needed to hear it. But at the end of the day, it's just like, you know, uh, people saying, how can people respond? Just understood where everybody was coming from and understanding that y'all had to be able to get out of there. And it's just like, I don't understand that y'all weren't there. So y'all not really getting the story 100%. Even the police didn't give y'all 100% story. And that's very clear based off what Zoe just said to me. That, you know, the police just kind of gave y'all like a in between the lines kind of thing so yeah so i, I, I just want to stay I just with want, them the whole time so if you have any questions autumn is not in a position to talk she's no. constantly quiet no and i understand but i want i want so i want to i just want to say this and i want you to relay the message Autumn it has always been like my daughter through Tyree and her up and downs. I have never ever got into any of the situational problems. I've known about everything. The other guy, I gotta actually kill him. I know, I know about all of that, that and I have never, as a parent, has been a type that either you know took sides or anything like that. But with that being said, I want you to understand what happened yesterday because Autumn probably doesn't even know because she was so irate. As a parent, and I put yourself, you have three children, so put yourself in my shoes. That's if, what I've been doing. And, That's what led me to and, and, and as I arrive on the scene, you know, they tell me my son is in there, and which I, that's already confirmed. They didn't have to say he was deceased. That confirmed he was deceased. And so I'm asking questions like, well, who did it? And they was like, well, her new boyfriend. And so my reaction it's based off of that because I'm like, well, what's yeah, he set up? Yeah, that's what Zoe just said. That's why uh, I said And I'm I like, was he mind. set up? Like, new boyfriend? Stay with me, stay with me. She was crying. All, JC said Autumn was such a mess. And that's why I was she had to take the phone and call 911 herself because JC was like, I know that when you call 911 crying, they will hang up with you. Mm -hmm. So JC was like, I call 911. She said, Tyree opened his eyes one time and closed them immediately. And it was just like, he was gone ever since then. Mm -hmm. And she was just like, the first phone call Autumn made, Autumn said the first phone call she made was you. Mm -hmm. And she was just like so shook. Like even, mm -hmm. like JC was, I feel like everybody was on a high for mm -hmm. like the first I want to say maybe 10 to 12 hours, mm -hmm. but later in that day, mm -hmm. JC was traumatized. Yeah. She texted me, and because I was like, we're all on the FaceTime, come join. And mm -hmm. she was like, I can't care. It's like, I cannot get Tyree's image on my mind. I can't talk to Autumn right now. Like, she And she was like, Autumn said, when she calls you, when you got there, she ran out was on the ground with you and mm -hmm. you know she just was like she didn't get a chance to explain anything she and so didn't because they separated us and yeah, but at the first at the so first at the first separation that was what they said so yeah you yeah, know no, but like the thing is it's unfortunate because you know this my sister and i love her and i would never you know say anything to make her feel guilty but you know she she should not have had him in my mom's house man yeah. and 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 i can't tell you how many times my mom has argued with Ona because she felt like ever since she moved in she was just disrespecting her house yeah. you know she was like you're 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 i come home you don't clean y'all mm -hmm. got these dogs in here you mm -hmm. get an ass to bring the dogs in here mm -hmm. and and, then and I was even asking Tyree, I said, oh, the mother allowed this. He was like, yeah, she cool. Because I'm thinking, okay, like, I know she She's grown to be passive. Yeah. Like, she don't agree with it, but it's like, she's to an age where she just don't want to be for her kids no more. And so she she don't always speak up like the way she used to. Because I, I sure ask. I sure ask because I know what yeah, I would allow. Not, um, yeah. She did not mess with the dogs there. And, and let me tell you something. My mom cried to me because she was just like, I, I told 
It's a very unfortunate situation. We got a young mom who had to raise her kid alone, and we have a young man who had to be raised without his dad. As we wrap this video up for part one, we want to say rest in peace to Tyree Richardson and love of condolences to his family. We're not here to bash the young woman if she had nothing to do with it. We're here to present the facts and let you guys make the decision on your own. Let me know how you guys feel about this one. This was the story of a young man who was an inspiring rapper from Merlin who was gunned down after trying to reconcile things with his baby mother by a man who was sleeping with her in her mom's house. Talk to me in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And today, I'll catch you guys on the next one.